fucked here. He's just getting the ball. See, Gallagher never got the ball to him there. He was in space and Gallagher never got the ball. But even if he gets the ball, you know, it's not as if he's free. So look at that touch. Absolutely brilliant. Couple of step overs, plays it back to Nabdi. So he missed his pass a bit and then they're on the counter attack. So to me, Mujic could be an absolute baller. But what we have to do is we need to play him and he needs to get used to playing the role. So he, he, to me, give Mujic a bit of time. He ain't that bad. Caldwell, Caldwell uh, I don't like this three at the back thing. I don't like him playing like a left back because when they do go into the three, he's wide, wide on the left. He doesn't look comfortable there. And the thing is, did he play like that? Did he play there at uh, Brighton's last year? He probably played in the back too, but I'm not sure. But he doesn't look 100% there. So, I, I, I don't know, that's a terrible tackle. Oh, is that the red card? Aye, that's a red card. Uh, 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 did he play as like a left back all the time? I, he doesn't look 100% comfortable. I would rather we played a back too and we, we, we put another player up the park. So if you're going to play Silva and uh, De Zazie, play Silva and De Zazie, and then you can rotate it with Caldwell. I'm sick of this three at the back carry on. I'm really sick of it because we just lose goals anyway. It's not as if it helps us win games or anything like that. We just lose goals anyway. So it's meant to be more defensively solid or it's meant to be more attacking. And the thing is, we're only more attacking and we can't defend. I don't know. Maybe having that extra player back there, uh, people don't take responsibility and it's not any good because it just doesn't work. I mean, you had uh, Silva was up the park because De Zazie played the ball forward and obviously lost it and the ball came back and then Kowa was too sort of like weak on the ball, just get bounced off it. And then De Zazie was one and one way, one and one way Antonio and he, he just let him shoot. He should have got in front of him. He should have got goal side him. But he looked. He just looked a bit lethargic. So, the thing we've got to remember as well. We don't know Axel Dzazi for Adam. You know what I mean? And he showed there that that was poor defending. That was poor defending. So it's okay blaming uh, other people and stuff like that. But all he had today was block that challenge. He didn't get tight enough. He didn't get goal side enough. And the guy just like shot. It was quite far out, and then the goalkeeper's not saving it. That's quite far out, and is it a bit, not a big angle, but a little bit of angle, and the keeper gets nowhere near it. I know he's hit it with a bit of pace, though, but it's no good. Uh, Carney, we've talked about. Let's talk about the Enzo penalty. I thought the, the goalkeeper maybe encroached, but then I seen a still of the goalkeeper actually had his foot on the line. But what I will say about the penalty is it's a very poor height to hit a penalty and it's like the best place. A goalkeeper, if you hit it that height, they're going to save it. You know, if they go the right way, they're going to save that. It was pathetic. It needs to go high or it needs to go low. Uh, and all this shuffling about and all that, you never fooled the goalkeeper at all, eh? I think if you're going to do all that shuffling, you have to do a little stop like Jorginho did. Because all he did was he gave the goalkeeper time to actually push off and save the shot. It was pretty poor. I don't know who's to blame with the penalty situation. Surely somebody's better at taking penalties than that because that, that was a pretty poor penalty. Wasn't impressed at all. Uh, a lot of people thought that it took the wind out of Enzo's sails a little bit. It might have done. I'm sort of watching it now. It's maybe, maybe overstated. It's maybe overstated. I'm watching the football as well, guys. <laughs> uh, it's maybe overstated, uh, but they're down to 10 men now, and it's difficult because they were sitting back, and they just sit back even more. And there's Gallagher sort of push, pushing his hand on Paqueta. He could have got a card and stuff like that. Bit of shenanigans. That's it. See, see when teams are trying to break up play and all that, you need to keep level-headed and that. You can't get too uptight. Uh, they are play-acting, but, you know, it's not very good. Hi, Stu. Yeah, Stu says, uh, Stu says, uh, Jackson should have took the penalty. Yeah, you're right, pal. Uh, it's, the thing is, uh, there must be somebody that can actually take a penalty better than that because that was poor. We, we've been no spoilt for a while, but 
uh, Jorginho scored most of his penalties. That's how he got most of his goals. He was scoring penalties quite regular. So we're sort of like relaxed and we think we're going to score penalties. We need somebody else that's better than that. I, I wouldn't touch Enzo with a penalty, you know. Remember Mason Mount wasn't very good at penalties. Technical wise and all that, he was a good striker of the ball, but he just missed penalties, didn't he? So maybe Enzo's the same. Maybe Enzo's the same. To me, he's a bit stiff tip to know that he's somebody who just spreads balls about. I would rather see somebody who can, you know, like Willie and Willie was like really good strike a penalty, like sweep it in type thing. I don't know. Thinking about it, who could actually take a penalty in our team? It's a hard job, eh? We need to find somebody because we can't, we can't miss penalties all the time. It's no good. Uh, Gabriel saying for me the issue with Enzo's penalty was he didn't look where the keeper was going he looked at the ball and shot whereas modern pens are usually taken once the keeper shifts his body weight yeah I agree Gabriel what, what that says to me is he's no confident uh, what you should do is watch a goalkeeper and no bother about the ball and then you're just concentrating and sweeping the ball into the corner or, or whatever you're going to do but he, he never did that he just concentrated on the ball it was. It's not just that though. It's where he played it. He played it a, a nice height for the goalkeeper. So it's no good. It's no good. Uh, next thing I thought was setting up. Uh, what do you guys think? Because it's not really working at the moment. I I thought he was just adjusting his tactics at, uh, against Liverpool because it was Liverpool. I thought he was a bit defensive. He wasn't really positive enough. <laughs> Tony Dagger. Tony Tiger, big up pal, good to see you in here, yeah, uh, I was hoping, well, I sort of thought he's doing it because it's Liverpool and because Liverpool have got great attackers and stuff like that, but I just felt, although we played nice flowing football and stuff like that, I still didn't get how, how we were, so, <laughs> just seeing Mujic fall over, right, that's, that's him, he's useless because he slipped, Uh <sighs> How do you guys think we're going to set up? Because I don't like the way we're setting up. But it's, we, we don't need to be free at the back. I, I don't think it helps us any. I'd rather see another player, either midfield or up front. You know, and that way there's there's more options for players when we get in that final third. So I just want more options. I'm looking at play the now, and Jackson's the only one that's sort of in the edge of the box. Everybody else is spread about midfield. You know, so... Are you going to break somebody down with that? No, really. All you're doing is you're, you're basically putting that, you're parking the bus in front of a parked bus. That's all you're doing. It doesn't work for me. It really needs a lot of movement and players giving people problems. So what we're doing at the moment was just passing the ball about, passing the ball about. It's an absolute waste of time. And that's why we actually fell out of the game. This is the last 15 minutes I'm watching now. Oh, my God. Who's that? Who's number two? Does Azzy? He just he just did a cross there and it was out for a corner and nearly hit the corner flag <laughs> and he's on the edge of the box. He was like thirty feet out where it where it should have been. Right, Noni's coming on now, so I never really noticed Noni playing, so I'm hoping he plays well. Gallagher's off. Gallagher was okay, but I think to improve we we need somebody better on the park and a Gallagher. Gallagher's just going to work hard. And I know he played half decent yesterday and all that. I think if you're talking about top four, top five, you need a better player. And that's why we've spent all the money, guys. We're not going to spend all this money and then just play the same people. Uh, Gabriel saying, I think the Nkunku injury really sabotaged your preparations. Correct, pal. I must say we played well second half versus Liverpool and first half versus Hammers. So it seems more of a team cohesion issue rather than tactics. The thing is, we're, we're going to have this. We're going to have this for a while. And what I'm hoping is by Christmas we are firing and we've got like a settled eight or nine players and then we maybe rotate the other two or three. So he's going to sort out his squad as well because we're now running out of days of this month. Pardon me. So the next week, the next week we are probably going to see, I think three players are coming in and we'll probably see about five to eight players going out, I think still. So I was talking to Roger and Bobby the other day and that's what's probably going to happen. I don't know what's happened to Bobby. Bobby, I sent you the link, buddy. What happened? Maybe he's busy now. Maybe, maybe, maybe he wasn't busy. The knew he's busy. Ah, uh, equation, yeah. I, I think it's a bit unreasonable to get rid of most of the team. 
bring in a lot of inexperienced players because even though we paid big money for these players, uh, a lot of them have had one season in the top flight. Like, uh, what do you call them? Mujic. Mujic's only played like one season at Shakhtar at a high level. Before that, he was like bumming about uh, Ukraine, hardly getting in teams, hardly playing. So Mujic's a really raw player. Just think of him as somebody who's out there out of the under twenty ones and has had one season because that's really a, played really well in Champions League, but he's still very inexperienced. So he needs a bit of time. And it's the same with Jackson. Jackson, that was his first season, and he wasn't even getting played at the start of the season all the time. I ended up he got twelve goals in the end, so he had a good finish to the season. I think he scored like eight goals in the last nine games or something like that. So again, Jackson to me is absolutely superb considering, you know, he's only had that one season. Uh, you've got Noni who PSV's had injuries and stuff like that. He's no like settled in a hundred percent. We we really need the. Even Enzo, Enzo's another one, half a season at Benfica, played the World Cup and then we've signed him. So I think some people need to take a reality check and where we are with a lot of these players. It's a lot of potential, it's a, it's a lot of people for the future. It will, it will get better, but it might not get better right away. And that's why we need a few experienced players in. I'm just watching Mujic now. He takes the guy on, gets fouled. So this is a guy that's just been fouled by that Suchek, absolutely big bum of a player. Uh, so he's totally skinned him and won the foul. So to me, is that Mujic useless? He's just like skinned the guy and the guy's fouled him. So you, you just need to watch football. I think what happens is people get too emotional. They watch a the game, we lose, and then they're just too much emotional stuff. And they need to just watch a game and and have a more balanced view of what actually went on. Because nine times out of ten, it's, it's no real. It's like they watch the game and then in their mind for days afterwards they're creating this other game that they think's happened that's not really happened. But it's hard. I've did watch alongs before and I get pissed off with players and stuff like that. But once I watch it a few times I calm down. God he falls clown owners. Disastrous. <laughs> Let's have it right. <laughs> is that what his mum calls him, Goddy Frogs? Uh, Gabriel A. Dezazi is a great player, a bad mistake, but he will. But we will see his class in more games to come. One thing I, I will say is I watched the first half and even in the second half, Dezazi just sweeps ball forwards all the time. You know how last season we very rarely get players that just played balls forward? He's done it all the time. So the guy is quite confident. What I'll say is I didn't like his lackey defensive ability when he was one and one with Antonio, you know, we lost the goal. Here's us bowing running at us. That's what I'm saying. We've got two two players on bowing and then uh Cassado's appeared. You know, what I mean they're running shreds. They're running. Oh, there's another shot. They're, like there's only one attacker, Bow Bowen. I know he's quick and stuff like that, but we've got two centre halves on him. That's enough. It's just they need to be sharper in the tackle and aye. So it's like putting two men on a one-man job and then Cassiedo's having to get all the way back and then he gets a free shot. You know what I mean? This is this is a thing that used to annoy me about the criticism of Kepa. Uh, teams are getting free shots against us all the time and I've just seen it twice there. The free shot for the goal where Dezazi just let him shoot. He should have blocked that. It did go through his legs, like, but he should be going to him and blocking the shot rather than sticking his leg out and it goes through his legs. Because that incites the keeper as well. No need doing okay there. The ball's going to go in for Gusto. Good ball. But that's the thing about Jack's... Oh, good shot here. Who was that? That was Caldwell. That's the thing... That's the thing about Jackson. He's useless in there. So they keep on putting balls in. And the guy's, the guy's got no form. He's got no sort of previous history. he had been any good with his head whatsoever. So he can put balls in all, all day. And he's never going to head or nothing. Because uh, I watched Pythagoras, uh, watched Pythagoras talking about his head and ability, and he, he just doesn't head of the ball. So if you're crossing balls in all the time, expect that to be an all of your it's going, not going to happen. It's not going to happen at all. Goddy Frogs is saying Tony Tiger, good chance that's two games where he's been involved in an error leading to a goal. Big up Tony. That's right, buddy. Because you can't rely on the facts. Because yeah. He, we're conceding goals and Dezazi's part of that. It's a, De a Dezazi class, that's what it is. Uh, Goddy Frogs, if I'm Poch, I'm, dro I'm dropping Dezazi for Trev. Trev's injured for a month, Goddy Frogs, so that one isn't going to fly. 
Uh, Tony Tiger, Trev got Hampshire. <laughs> You're just pointing out what I'm saying, hi. Uh, Gabriel A says, I don't want to spoil it for you, Mitchie, but we don't score. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the football on but I would really wasn't concentrating on the second half you know when I was doing something but the first half I have watched I watched that in the bath uh, and I sort of concentrated on it but I, that's what I'm saying I need to concentrate and really watch what every player's doing and come up with some sort of proper opinion because I'm not going to have a proper opinion until I'm sure what I'm talking about eh? Even even when you really watch a game, you maybe have to watch it two or three times to really take it in and assess how every player's played. And definite, it's just an experience from Dezazi. As he gets used to the league, he won't give them same spaces. That's it. I agree. And definite, it's like every other player on the team. They're going to need time. It's like we've brought in all these players. I could go through the team, but I'm not going to bother. Right go through the team, half of them have been there five minutes, right? The other half were here last season, hardly got a game. So you're talking about pretty much most of your team, uh, apart from people like maybe Enzo and Sterling, people like that, Chile. They, they've played they've played regular in the team. A lot of the team have now. So they need to come into the team and they need to be bedded in. It's going to take some time. So it's ridiculous to sort of bitch about them. We, we are not going to get rid of all these players, guys. It's ridiculous. We're not going to sell Mujic. We're not going to sell this year. We're not going to sell that. We're not going to sell that one. We might loan some players out if the manager thinks they're not ready. If we can bring in other people or we just got too many bodies, some guys are going to get loaned out. But we aren't just going to get rid of like 40 players out of our squad and there's nobody left. Because if you add up all the people that everybody says is crap and to get rid of, there's nobody left. It's just nonsense. And definitely, still why you play a back four in pre-season and then revert to a three. That's one of the decisions I didn't like as well, and definite, is it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, who'd you call him? It's a bit jellyfish, isn't it? Because remember, he kept on doing stupid things. So he needs to, and definite, big up, Mitchy boy. Thanks, pal. And definitely, I said to the guys, I said to the guys on the show, if anybody wants to jump on, let me know, and I'll send them the link. I haven't had time to send the links out tonight. I've been too busy. I've had to do, I've had to go through my coursework for the day. I've been out for dinner with the wife, and I've been on a course all day, so I've not had time to send out all the links. But I'll do it now if anybody wants the link to come on the show. Okay, that includes you, Tony Tiger. Uh, Stu says, only thing that concerns me, Mitchie, is lack of leaders in the squad. We don't have a GT, Dennis Wise, Vinny Jones, who will grip teammates when they need to. A lot, lot to be said for a Glasgow kiss. <laughs> you fucking Glasgow kiss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Aye, big, big up, Stu, for uh, St Andrews. That, that's me and my wife's favourite place to go, by the way. Uh, St Andrews, we love it, pal. And we go there quite on a regular basis. Probably every month, every month or so, we'll, we'll pop over there for a hotel stay. It's really good. Uh, after a pre-season, uh, Tony saying, after a pre-season playing four at the back, why have we black free? You guys are all copying each other. What he's like? He's all copy and paste merchants. <laughs> Tony Tiger, aye, does he? I thought he was just being phased out because these owners want to sell him. Mm. Who are you talking about? Try to see what you're talking about there. All oh, right, ah, right. I've got you. Mean Goddy Frogs means that Trev Chalabar's no really got a proper uh, injury. It's just waffle because the owners want to sell him, and it's a cover for that, and they're going to sell him. Uh, that's a wee conspiracy theory from the God of Frogs. And Tony saying both are probably true. Sometimes things are true. Two things at once. Right, the balls just came to... Oh, <laughs> I've just seen the magic volley. <laughs> that was shocking, guys, eh? He, did, he goes up and he tries to say foot a volley and it goes straight up in there. It was absolutely shocking. I get, I, get, I, I get why people are moaning and stuff like that, but you know what I mean? It's, it's what it is. It's no great. You weren't saying that when Mujic put that brilliant goal in in pre-season. You weren't talking about his technique then, were you? I, the one thing I'll say about yesterday, it's not in my notes, but I would like to see that link-up play that uh, Matson had with Jackson. I, I, I never really seen that yesterday. I mean, 
Sterling was doing his thing and creating chaos, be driving driving at West Ham and stuff like that. But his his link up plays, passes, and all that are not the greatest. His little cutbacks, 